For 45 years, the country of Albania existed under the iron shadow of communism. It was a particularly vitriolic type of communism that banished all forms of religion totally from society, except for the religion of atheism. Today, the new, young, fledgling Seventh-day Adventist church is growing, despite many challenges. That and much more coming up on today's program. Just before he went up to heaven, Jesus gave us a command. He gave us a mission. Jesus said, go, go unto all the world, telling them of his love. This is our mission. This is our global mission. Hello and welcome to Global Mission Snapshots, coming to you today from the city of Tirana, the capital city of Albania. It's a bright afternoon here, and this is a place where the Adventist church is relatively young. The fall of communism came in the early 1990s, and so the church has started to grow, and Global Mission is starting new congregations around the country. We'll be talking to the mission president, a missionary from the country of El Salvador. We'll also be talking to one of only two ordained Albanian pastors working here in this country. We'll be traveling to Belize, but first up, let's visit three global mission pioneers planting new congregations in South Africa. Three pioneers, one common job. Gift, Steward, and Moketsi are an energetic global mission pioneer team with a mission to reach the city of Pretoria, South Africa. These men understand the local context, they speak different African languages, and they are ready to creatively face the mission challenge. Daily, they look for an opportunity to relate to people. Some they encounter door to door. Others, they are only able to talk to during a work break at the gas station. Paulin works here. For a few weeks, he has been actively learning the Bible with the three pioneers. One of the many important life lessons Paulin has learned is to share the knowledge of Jesus with friends. And before long, he invited Maria, a co-worker, to study with him. Now, they are both waiting to finish their last lesson before baptism. In Pretoria, there are many train preachers. It's a common sight while traveling by train. Pioneer Steward frequently travels by train. And one day, he decided to address the many misconceptions presented as he rode the train. But instead of confronting train preachers, he chose another wagon where he speaks directly from the Bible on a daily basis. He always prays with the fellow riders and has found encouragement through the growth he has seen on regular commuters in his church wagon. And so far, I have discovered that many people have benefited from these presentations because right now they are able to identify who is saying the truth and who is saying false doctrine. Because people are beginning to even follow me wherever they see me getting into a coach. People, they are now knowing me, they follow me. Some audience, they follow because they want to learn more about what I am presenting. As the three pioneers dodge traffic, navigate crowds, and climb endless sets of stairs in the city's towering apartment buildings, they know God is working with them to find hearts hungry for truth and hope. One day, the three pioneers met an interesting woman. As usual, they spoke kindly with her and gave her a study guide. I introduced the lessons and she showed interest in, in this lesson. And uh, in two days when I left there, she called me because I had supplied my contact number on the POPs, and she called that, come, I am done with your lessons. You know, I, I went back there, thinking that in two days, I know people can take a month, some weeks to complete, but in two days, she was done. I went there, I took the lessons, and I marked them. You know, when I was marking, I uh, could see that really she read them. The pioneer team was surprised to see that this woman had been up all night studying all of the lessons. She couldn't put them down. Although tired, she still had many questions about the Bible, God, salvation, and prophecy. 
So Gift, Steward, and Moketsi continued to visit her house and strengthen her faith. It was clear that the Holy Spirit was moving her heart and mind towards God. The Spirit of the Lord is always working in people's lives. We had people who are willing to come to the church. Some, they have already decided that they are coming to church. In fact, during the past two years, the pioneers have studied the Bible with some 1,500 people and baptized more than 200 of them. Through this, they started two new branch churches, and they are encouraged to continue reaching many more for the kingdom of God. Thank you for your prayers and financial support of global mission pioneers across the world. They are making a difference in reaching the cities. I'm talking with Pastor Leo Espana, and we are in Albania, where Pastor Leo, you are serving as the president of the mission. Yes. Plus, you're also pastoring a church in this city. Um, how many years have you been pastoring the church here? I came here in 2008, end of 2008, and since then I've been pastoring here in the Church of Duras. Yeah. How many people do you have worshiping on Sabbath? We have an average of 30 people to 35 people coming every wonderful, Sabbath. Wonderful. Yes. Now, this is a port city, obviously. Yes. Now, what happened here in the early 1990s? Well, uh, this is a city very important. Uh, it's the second largest city of Albania. And also it's important because of the harbor. Just across, we have Italy, about 300 kilometers from here, at the city of Bari. Uh, after communist time, many Albanians wanted to go away from Albania and to know other countries and to look for a better living. So many people came here and tried to go to Italy. Right, so there's pictures of the boats that are just full of people yes. trying to get away. It happened just right here. Yeah. Right? Yes, exactly. This is the place. Now, in the last uh, d couple of days, we've seen global mission projects here yes. in Albania. What are the good things that are happening here? Well, we thank God because uh, the best thing that can happen in Albania is people coming to Jesus. Yes. And uh, through the global mission projects, we have seen that people are coming. For example, here in the church in Duras, uh, one of our projects is to run language courses, mm -hmm. Spanish, English, and people like to learn languages, and they have come. We have a, a computer lab there, and people come, and they register, and then once they are learning, they say, what is here? What are you doing here? Yes. We say, well, this is a church, and we also teach about the Bible, and, th and we invite them to come. Ah, so you're really a center of influence in the city, yes, sir. in the heart of the city. W wonderful. Now. Uh, I have heard you speaking Albanian, and it seems to me that you speak it very well, but that is not your language. Where are you from? I'm originally from El Salvador, Central America. So what is a family from El Salvador doing in Albania? <laughs> well, as you know, Gary, God has plans for all of us, and once we decide to follow His, his will, He knows where He wants you to be. And so so we are serving as uh, missionaries here with my wife. My wife is from Honduras. Wonderful. And by the way, uh, we have two children, and one of our uh, just five months old, we have a baby girl born in Albania. Uh, what a blessing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what are your plans for the future here in Albania? Well, we want to see the church growing even much more. Uh, we have many cities that still have not been penetrated. Uh, even though um, Adventist Church is in most of the main churches, uh, main cities here in Albania, we're still lacking to penetrate in North Albania and very South of Albania. Cities like Skodor and Saranda are cities that uh, need to be reached for, for Jesus. We recently started a new uh, global mission project in the city of Fier as well. Very good. Now, after many years, 45, 47 years of communism where religion was banished, uh, there is a high rate of atheism in this country. Is that still the case? Yes, uh, there are still some people that are skeptical to yeah. religion, yeah. others that um, just don't want to talk about God. Yeah. Uh, however, the people are more open now oh, to the gospel. And I believe that that's an opportunity for, yeah. for us to spread the gospel here. Now, what about um, p pastors? H how many Albanian pastors do you have? Okay, we have uh, presently three Albanian pastors. One is our um, secretary of the yes. mission as well, but he's also pastor in the central church in Tirana, Pastor Julian Castrati. We have also Pastor Genti Thomolar, who is in Elbasan, the project that you recently visited. Yes. And we have uh, Pastor Trifio Angela, who is in the church plant in Fier, the city that I just mentioned to you. Okay. He was previously working in Korch and now is, has moved to work in the church plant in Fier. Yeah. 
So you have a, a small team and a big task. Yes, <laughs> you said so. Yeah. We understand what it means when Jesus said that we need to pray for more laborers. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you say are the bigger, the, what is the biggest mission challenge facing you here? I believe we need to be more um, open to the to the community still. Yes. We need to get to know, people, Albanians need to know who the Adventists are. Right. Uh, we thank God for ADRA, because ADRA International was the first also an NGO organization that came to the country. Yes. Uh, but also we need to spread more. Um, uh, the most well-known religion here in Albania are, is, is Islam and Orthodox, Greek Orthodox Church. Right and Catholicism varies, it's a 10 percentage. And then, so we are not that well known. No. So we need to work more on that. I would say that as Adventists, we still need to invest in Albania in education, yes. in health. Yes. And, and uh, we don't have a school here yet. Yeah. We don't have any um, hospital or clinic, even though right. with ADRA we've been uh, working with that, um, with health as well, but we still need to get to know um, more the Adventism in the community. Yeah. Pastor Leo, thank you so much for sharing with us. And, it's my pleasure. And viewers at home, please remember the challenge here in Albania. Remember Pastor Leo and his team as they follow God's leading as they seek to build his kingdom right here in Albania. We've got more mission coming up right after this break. Welcome back, and I'm delighted to be talking to Pastor Julian here in Tirana, Albania. Uh, summer's day, sun is coming down, and Pastor Julian, you were one of the founding members of the Adventist Church here in this country. In fact, you were one of the first ordained Seventh-day Adventist pastors. We're standing in front of this building. Describe it and tell me the significance of it to you. Okay, this building is very, very significant. Uh, it's personal, but it's also much more than that. This building, we call it the Pyramid. Yes. Uh, but it was built originally in the late 80s as a memory uh, for the legacy of our communist dictator, Enver Hoxha. Ah. He is infamous all around the world and notorious because he is the author of banning religion completely from this, Albania becoming the first atheist country in the world. And it's very ironic and iconic, mm. <laughs> I would say, that it's in this very first, very building, it's in, in this very building that we have had the evangelistic meetings, the very first ones run by Pastor David Curry from Australia. And this is the meeting where uh, Meropi Pijika, probably you know the famous story, I think all, the, all around the world, her story is well known. And I also got baptized in this very building inside. Okay, now this story, this was a, a lady who had remained faithful through the years of communism. T t well, just tell us briefly the story. Her story was very, became famous in the GC session in 1995, but I think it's time maybe for the, even for the younger gener uh, generation of Adventists to, to know this, her story, because it's a beautiful story. Here's a lady. She was a member of the Daniel Lewis uh, small group back in the 30s. And when he became a martyr, you know, in the 50s, uh, he was tortured by the communist regime. She kept seeing him in prison. She loved the Lord but you know Daniel was a pharmacist he was not an ordained minister right so she couldn't get baptized and she waited 45 47 years wow. to be exact uh, for the day in t until she could get baptized here she was baptized by David Curry not just that she waited for 45 years she collected her tithe regularly every month and she handed it in to the General Conference officials back in 1992. A very touching story. So she just kept storing it away through those years? She kept storing it away. With that money, at that time in Albania, she could have bought a beautiful villa anywhere they, they liked. But she was so faithful to the Lord. And she said, you know, I have these three dreams. I want to return the tithe to the church, to the Seventh-day Adventist church, to my church. I want to get baptized and I want to see a church built in Tirana. Wonderful. Now, you were attending the meetings, you started doing Bible studies, but it was her baptism that really influenced you. What happened? Absolutely. We, I was, uh, from the very beginning of uh, Pastor, I was fascinated by the Amazing Discoveries series. Uh, it was just beautiful. I was I accepted all the doctrines. But you know, there was something. When you're a first-generation Adventist, uh, when you hear the name Seventh-day Adventist, 
it seems a little bit, let's say, bizarre or a bit strange, right. you know. Uh, so I had some misgivings, you know, okay, should I get baptized? So I was very close, but I had not made the final decision. But I was there on the 18th of April, 1992, and I was right there in this building inside. And when David introduced her uh, in front of all of us, and I was just there, I was two meters away from, from her, uh, from the baptistry. And when I saw her praising the Lord with her face, you know, up to the heavens, just like that, and saying, praise be and glory to the King. I waited 45 years for this day. I was like, wow, this mm -hmm. lady, there must be, if she waited that long, there must be something very special about this church. This must be the true church of God. I better join this church sooner or later. And I was baptized the next, the following Sabbath. Amazing. A beautiful story. Yeah. And I was, we were all crying. It yeah. was probably the first time I was really crying like a, like a little baby. I was a teenager at that time. Very touching story. Yeah. And that's what made me, well, who I am now. And we're all shaped and we all learn from her example. Wonderful, wonderful story. Now, Julian, you grew up as a kid in an environment where atheism was a religion. What was that like? It was very strange, you know, uh, very interesting because uh, in school we learned about evolution and there is no God and all these are fairy tales and stupid stories and then so on and so forth. Uh, you know, my mom, very interestingly, very secretly, even though she was a math and physics teacher, she would tell me secretly, look, there is a God. Uh -huh. Don't listen to the communists. Now, she was, her family was persecuted by the communist regime. But it was a very strange, it was, it felt like there was something lacking, you know, in your life. Uh, growing, it's like you are empty. There is no, you are just, you feel like we are all like animals, right. you know, apes and uh, survival of the fetus, that kind of thing. And then, you know, it was, it was, it was difficult. Uh, and you see the consequences and the long transition, the corruption, the, the organized crime that have plagued this country for decades. There is a direct consequence of that lack of the fear of God, you know, for all those 30, 40 years when Albania was uh, staunchly atheistic. So, so when you see the popularity of the new atheists at the moment, how do you react with your background? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, for me, it's just so sad to see uh, this new, this neo-atheism movement and so on and so forth. It has brought nothing but, you know, destruction, uh, tears, pain, uh, disillusionment, corruption. It's brought the worst, I think, that the human nature can bring about. Uh, and it's just something that uh, is very sad and I, we never want to see. No Albanian wants to go back to those years yeah. uh, when there was no God present in the society, where you see churches being burned and being destroyed. Uh, when, pe when you imprison people because they read the Bible, and that's just something awful. And there's so much lost in humanity from that kind of horrible ideology. Right. Julian, you're the secretary of the Albanian mission. You're one of only two ordained Seventh-day Adventist pastors working in this country. What is your hope and dream for this country? My dream is uh, very similar. It resembles um, Meropi Jika's dream to have a beautiful blossoming church here to extend the kingdom of God in this country, which so badly, I think more than any other place in, the, in Europe needs God because it's been so dried up. Uh, it's been so, uh, it's been really uh, so thirsty for the word of God. And I want to see the church grow. We have the youngest church I'm, uh, in Europe, probably in the world, uh, in terms of uh, our membership. We are very encouraged to see uh, a growing lay, active lay members, uh, membership movement. And we are so thrilled to continue to work here, uh, to have church in every major town, and then to extend all around the country, and uh, where we can take the third, uh, the three, we can take the three angels message. Fantastic, thank you so much. <laughs> And Thank you. please continue to remember church leaders, pastors, lay people here in Albania in your prayers. And, you know, they have many challenges and they need a world church that is praying for them. Next up, let's go to the country of Belize. On this Sabbath in northern Belize, 
Police have set up a checkpoint in front of the Adventist church. Their church sits right along the busiest road in town. A group of church members have planned something special to reach out to their community, and the traffic stop plays an important role. It's not a big city, but this is where the most cars and pedestrians pass by. Since this is the traffic hotspot of the area, sometimes the police have checkpoints. They will check for seatbelts, registration, and anything else regarding the driver's safety. But this is not an ordinary traffic checkpoint. The church members use this as an opportunity to share about Jesus. As the police stop the cars, the church members pass out Christian magazines and books. Young and old take part in this activity. Drivers are pleasantly surprised as they stop and receive an unexpected gift. The drivers also have an opportunity to pull over and enjoy a free concert put on by the church's Pathfinder Club. Many enjoy this unique event and the cars are piling up. The Adventist group working alongside the Pathfinders is called Manos del Rey, or Hands of the King. Manos del Rey was started as an outreach group in Belize. They build churches, hold community events, and do whatever it takes to share about Jesus. The members in this group range in age groups. Ronaldo, Jeremy, and Rodolfo are cousins. They love being part of Manos del Rey. During the week, they love to swim, play soccer, and be a part of other events like these. These boys have fun passing out magazines to drivers. It doesn't matter if it's a small car or a huge truck. Ronaldo is eager to make sure people have the opportunity to hear about Jesus. Even though some people refuse to take the magazines, Ronaldo is not discouraged. He continues to work with enthusiasm. He even makes sure the police officers have magazines to take home with them. This is just one of many events the group plans. It involves everyone in the important task of reaching the hearts of the Belizean people. As a result of events like these, many people have come to know Jesus and are attending the local church. Once they hear the message, a lay church member will visit their home and study the Bible with them. The churches here get so full that new churches are needed throughout Belize. That's where Manos del Rey comes back into the picture. They help them build a new church. They work tirelessly to fill the demand of building requests. Shortly after one building is finished, construction begins on the next. Church members throughout Belize are constantly looking for opportunities to share God's love. Please pray for the members in Belize. Pray that they will continue to reach their community and teach them about Jesus. And thank you for supporting Mission. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's snapshots of mission around the world, from small villages in countries such as Belize through to teeming cities such as Johannesburg in South Africa. The light of God's love is touching the lives of many men and women, boys and girls. But huge challenges remain, and so please continue to pray for mission around the world. Pray for frontline mission workers, for church planters, for global mission pioneers, for missionaries in their challenging work. We would like to give you a free gift to thank you for your support of Mission. The 2015 Global Mission Calendar is full of snapshots of Mission around the world. It's a daily reminder to pray for Mission. Thank you for joining us on today's program, and I hope you can join us next time right here on Global Mission Snapshots. <laughs>